Well, there's a couple of stories here that I I want to share with you because I find them disturbing. And quite honestly, I didn't believe either one of them right away. And so I sent it up to the newsroom uh, yesterday to have the Blaze do research on them and to find out. These can't be true, right? They both are. Um, let's start first with the uh, Department of Defense. The Department of Defense has just issued a a new list of uh, extremists that should be watched. And on that, in fact, number one, hmm, past the Muslim Brotherhood, and past Hamas, Hezbollah, number one, evangelical Christians. Evangelical Christians uh, and uh, uh, Mormons, Catholics, I think Catholics, Catholics coming in at number eight. Along with the Klan uh, and uh, and Muslim extremists. Now I don't. I I've I've missed all of those stories on those really bad uh, Catholic bombings here in America. I've I've missed all of the fertilizer LDS bombs. I've missed all of those. I, I haven't seen the the big evangelical cross burnings uh, that have been happening. So maybe I've just been asleep at the switch. Now, what the De- Department of Defense is saying is, well, okay, this was just put together by one guy who was just giving some, you know, some talks there at the Pentagon, and he just was. You know, he he was just doing his own thing. <laughs> How many times does that happen with our military? All the time. They are just not, you know, they're just not really into the chain of command thing at the Pentagon. If that is true, which I believe it to be, if that is true, that shows our military is in danger because it obviously is losing control of itself. Now, the tip-off on this stupid thing is um, he misspells a couple of things, right? He misspells Al-Qaeda, but Al-Qaeda is like uh, Osama bin Laden. I don't really know how to spell that because they keep spelling it like 600 different ways. It's like the pronunciation of of uh, gutter. It used to be uh, Qatar. Qatar. It was Cutter for a while. Yeah, Cutter. I mean, it's whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a couple of other spelling errors in this, isn't there, Stu? In the one that you found? Yeah, um, the Mormans. You guys familiar oh, with Mormans? Mormans. Yeah, okay, I guess uh, it's kind of like mermaids. Uh, the mm-hmm. Mormans. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, very de- deadly group. The deadly. Latter Day uh, Saints. L A D D E R. Uh, no, yeah. that's from another one. Mm-hmm. Is it? Yeah. Now that's story number two. Oh. Now you heard the excuse from the um, Department of Defense. Mm-hmm. Let's ask the Colorado State Patrol what their excuse is. This one, I came back and I could not believe it. I uh, we called for a verification, and yep. Let me give you the article. When it comes to freedom, things are changing fast and for the worse in America, and it's happening at accelerated speed here in Colorado. Not only are laws being written at mock speed to regulate, tax, and restrict individual freedoms, but ideas are changing amongst the Colorado citizens. Local law enforcement in particular are being put at a new crossroads and are being positioned to make some tough decisions about their duties. They will very soon be choosing between enforcing constitutional rule of law and new laws which contradict our constitutional principles and which make criminals out of innocence. April 5th, 2013, blogger Stephen Ale, A-H-L-E, received an email from Prower Prower County, Colorado Undersheriff Ron Trowbridge. This is what the post read. 
I've recently received a letter from one of the law enforcement's finest. He had attended a seminar in which he was told to be on the lookout for Christians. The letter was written by an attendee, Ron Trowbridge, under Sheriff Prowers County, Colorado. I'd like to thank the sheriff and the letter and the 25 years he has spent protecting the public in his county. Fears of reprisals from either the Colorado State Police and Homeland Security fail to stop this patriot from exposing what our law officers are being subjected to. Because of his bravery, we're able to get an inside look on how nefarious forces within our government are attempting to indoctrinate our law officers. This letter proves our officers cannot be intimidated nor can they be turned on uh, nor can they be turned on the people they serve. The people of Prowers County are lucky to have this man. Here is the letter, unedited, complete in its original form. Now, I read that and I thought, no way this is true. On April 1st, 2013, I was attending training, uh, training hosted by the Colorado State Patrol. The training was from 12 in the afternoon to 4 p.m., and it covered two topics, sovereign citizens and outlaw motorcycle gangs. I was pretty familiar with motorcycle gangs, but since we often deal with a so-called sovereign citizen group, I was interested to see what they had to say. The group consisted of 20, uh, I'm sorry, of police officers, deputies, and CSP troopers. There were 20 people in attendance. Trooper Mike Kluzinski taught a two-hour section on sovereign citizens. He spent most of the two hours focusing on how, in his view, and apparently the view of Homeland Security, people turn to the sovereign citizen movement. Lazinski started off by saying that there are probably some sovereign citizens in this room and gave a generalized list of those groups that have sovereign citizen views. Among the groups Kaczynski had listed were those who believe America was founded on godly principles. That would be me. Christians who take the Bible literally. That would be me. And fundamentalists. I don't know what that means exactly, but I think that might be even me. Kluzinski did not explain what he meant by fundamentalist, but from the context it was clear that he was referring again to those who took the Bible literally or, quote, too seriously. While Kluzinski emphasized that sovereign citizens have a right to their beliefs, he was clearly teaching that the groups he had listed should be watched by law enforcement and should be treated with caution because of their potential assault to law enforcement. Luzinski explained that why he believed these groups were dangerous, saying they were angry over the election of a black president. I'm in a hard time putting that all together. When someone in the group suggested the failing economy was probably much more to blame, uh, Kluzinski said, those who are not going along with the changes in America will need to be controlled by law enforcement. Even later, he was questioned uh, by some of the troopers present, and he questioned back and asked if they were willing and prepared to confiscate illegal weapons if they were ordered to do so. His assignment with the Colorado State Police was as an analyst for the Colorado Information Analysis Center. It is funded by Homeland Security and run by the Colorado State Police. Luzinski says he gets his information from the Department of Homeland Security. He said he was leaving the CSP at the end of that week to begin his new career with the Department of Homeland Security. Under Sheriff, Prowers County Sheriff's Office. Hmm. As I said, I sent it upstairs to the newsroom when I got it. And I think my subject line was, this can't be true. Please dismiss or verify. Yesterday afternoon, we verified that that is true. This is not something new and if you believe it to be accidental you are foolish in Missouri 
It was just an accident that these groups were listed. Ron Paul, Tea Party members. People who had the snake flag. That was just a mistake. That was in Missouri State Police. We've seen it over and over again. We've seen members of this government refer to people as terrorists who are Tea Party members. We have seen celebrities say that Christians are as dangerous, if not more dangerous, than Al-Qaeda. We've now seen it in the Department of Defense. But that was just one guy. That was an accident. He was just flying solo on that. And now the Colorado State Police. From a guy who's leaving to go to the Department of Homeland Security. I ask you if you're a police officer. I ask you if you are a sheriff. I ask you if you are a service member to make your decisions now because it will be a slippery slope. Have you ever listened to Tea Party people? Have you really listened to them? Have you listened to what they're saying? Have you ever interacted with them? If you're a police officer, I can guarantee you that if they've ever had a rally in your town, you've not had a problem with them. I can guarantee you if you're honest, even if you disagree with them politically, you have seen a group of people just exercising their First Amendment right to assemble and to speak their mind. And they most likely have treated you with uber respect. And they've treated your town. They've treated its parks. And they've treated our country and our history with respect. And you compare that to Occupy Wall Street and you compare that to what happened by the labor unions in Wisconsin. You make your decision. Are Christians who believe in the Bible, are they extremists? Are Christians who believe that this country was founded on godly principles, are they extremists? You can disagree with it. But to believe that they're an extremist makes you an extremist because you're disagreeing with historic documents you're disagreeing with the writings of the founders, their own words. So you may disagree with them on why they founded the country, but you would be the extremist if you're denying reality. Sheriffs. Police officers. Your best friends have always been the law-abiding citizen. And those people who would never have thought of calling you pigs or anything else,